Okay, I think we'll get started. Uh, so today we're going to do a little application lab uh, after we've learned a little bit about um, this PIC 12F675. This will be utilizing the comparator and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build a little salinity tester. So the experiment will be pretty easy. It's stuff you can do at home even if you don't have access uh, to a lab. All you need is some uh, distilled water from the grocery store uh, and some table salt. And so uh, we're just going to show sort of the basic idea here again, um, emphasizing the microcontroller itself and the programming that goes into it, the assembly program that goes into it. So certainly you could um, do a little bit more advanced and careful study than this experiment. Uh, but I think this will show you the basis for uh, how we how we would do something like this. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to convert the conductivity of a salt solution into a voltage and we're going to compare distilled water with tap water and with a one molar sodium chloride solution. And so we'll have a little uh, compare to a reference voltage and if we um, go lower, and I'll talk about that in a minute, then the reference voltage will turn an LED light on indicating the salinity is too high. So we're going to want our LED light to be off when we have either distilled water or tap water and then turn on when we have, um, when we have a high salt solution. So the uh, setup is pretty simple here. We are going to uh, just utilize the output of the comparator to our LED. And then let's talk about this circuit first here. Uh, my power meter keeps turning, or my voltmeter keeps beeping at me, so I'll turn that off. Uh, very simple circuit here, voltage divider circuit. And uh, we're going to have our, our sort of solution in series with a resistor. I've chosen a very large resistor here because I want the voltage across the leads down here to be small. We don't want to start, uh, if we exceed uh, about point, if we, even even a volt, but say point eight, about point eight seven, I think, millib um, volts, uh, we will start to produce some oxygen and hydrogen at the electrodes. And so we don't want to have that redox reaction happening. Uh, we want to just measure the conductivity between the leads here. So we put a large resistor here. That'll let us utilize the same voltage source that we're using to power the chip. And um, then uh, we can drop the voltage enough across the solution. Simple, simple uh, voltage divider. We're going to then take this uh, voltage across the, we'll call this RS, the resistance of the solution, and bring that into pin one, which will compare then to a reference voltage. The um, the voltage across here then is simply uh, RS divided by RS plus uh, one times, whoops, times V source, V naught, so times the five volts. Okay, uh, now I'm going to do this a little bit out of order. We'll look at the uh, circuit first and then we'll talk about the code afterwards because uh, there's a little bit to it in terms of building your little device here for testing the solution uh, and then getting getting that all set up. Now I did do a, a couple of pre-calculations. Uh, I wanted to figure out the voltage of the tap solution, the de deionized uh, or the distilled water solution, and the um, one molar sodium chloride solution. So I checked that voltage so that I could institute the correct reference voltage here. So the idea being that we would um, check, uh, get the range of voltages that we want, uh, and then we can set things up internally here on the code uh, to turn the light on when we exceed a particular, or actually go below a particular voltage. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to the uh, circuit and let's take a look at that. 
So first of all, I'm going to try to maybe put this against a background. And uh, I've just built this um, solution probe with these DuPont leads. So maybe you have some of those and a, uh, I just chose in here, I think I chose a six, a six member um, sort of connector piece here. And then I put these on both ends of that so that this will always have a consistent distance um, between the leads. And it also provides a kind of a stable um, case for these wires when you dip them into the solution. So this is just completely home built. Now you could take some wire and use a hot glue gun or something like that. Do something to try to keep the, the wires consistent. You could use two separate wires, um, but it's nice to have the consistency of distance. All right, so let's look at the circuit here now. Um, Simple setup. We, the light is on here because it's just getting some spurious voltage because uh, nothing's hooked up. So we'll see it blink or uh, turn on and off as we go. Um, the voltage divider then is down here. So I'm going to connect one lead of the solution probe to ground and one lead to the other part of this circuit. And then I'm going to turn my voltage on. And uh, first, let's put this into the deionized water. So I've got deionized water, tap water, and sodium chloride. Uh, if you're doing this in sequence, uh, probably best to go from the most dilute, the deionized, up to the, um, the most concentrated. Then we can pretty much just dry the probe and dip it in. Uh, if you're going the other way, you'll want to wash the probe off, make sure that um, you don't carry any salt on the probe into the deionized or the tap water solution. So let's try the deionized solution first. And um, we'll see the voltage drop here considerably um, because even in the, oh, let's see what's going on. Voltage measured across here. Must have something mishooked up. Oh, yeah, I do. Um, oh no. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the video uh, and then figure out what I've got mishooked up here. Okay, I think I must have had um, some wires. Um, in the wrong spot or there was a flaky spot but I've um, taken them out and re, um, re put them back in it seems to be working now so let's look at our voltage here as I put this into the deionized and actually I'm noticing a little bit smaller voltage uh, than I was probably because I've been doing this a little bit touching with my hands getting uh, easy to get some salt into the deionized water so Here's our voltage uh, that's being measured. And what we have done now is I've set the voltage threshold so that if it's above, uh, I think it's like 0.4, uh, 0.41, and we'll go through that calculation when we look at the code, uh, then it, the light will turn off. So we've got the um, probe in solution here. I'm going to now take a lead and bring that over to the input, which is one, and our light goes off. Okay. So we're in our distilled water and our light goes off. Let's um, move now to the tap water. Tap water should still be off unless I've gotten extra salt into the tap water. And so we're at 550 millivolts. And I think, as I said, uh, about 410 millivolts is what I set as the threshold. So light's still off.
And now finally, we will use the one molar sodium chloride solution. And now we are below the threshold and we can see that our light went on. So this is uh, our circuit working here now. Now, if you wanted to be a little more advanced with this, you could, uh, you could make several salt solutions and try to get a, a profile of the um, voltage as a function of the salinity. And you could be a little more sophisticated in how you turn things on and off. If you want to get a little more advanced with the code, you could shift to using the A to D converter and then having a sequence of lights light up um, for the level of the salinity. So there's lots of things you can do from here, uh, but this is showing the, sort of the basic um, start of that. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the code now. So I'm going to switch to uh, seeing the code. And so let's take a look at that. So uh, here's our salinity tester. And I'll have this code up in GitHub uh, at the GitHub page. So you could find that. It's very similar to the comparator code that we used before. Just a few changes, uh, and we'll see where those go. Now, uh, first part, again, as always, our configuration bits, the include file, uh, and then the code here to set the, where the main program starts and um, all that stuff that has to always be there. Then again, the way I, I tend to like to write them, main and then the main loop. So main is the stuff that we do at the beginning that doesn't have to change. And then main loop is when the program's up and running as it is now. So uh, let's, uh, we'll, we'll go through this quickly because we've talked about this in the other videos, but uh, we need to go from bank zero to bank one, depending on what we need to change. Uh, so we are going to go to bank zero because the uh, both the GPIO, so we'll just um, for good measure clear the GPIO, but more importantly, the uh, comparator is, register is in bank zero. So uh, here's where we're going to set the comparator. And let's, let's review that again. So if you follow along in the data sheet on page 37, we'll be looking at, actually I'm going to cap my solutions because very likely tip that over. Um, so we're, we've now, we look at these last three digits to set the comparator type. And so we're going to do this type um, output. So we want an output uh, with internal reference. And so our output pin is going to be pin 2, GP2. And our input pin is going to be uh, GP1. And it's got to be uh, set um, as an input. So um, as we proceed here, we are now going to go to bank 1. And we're going to clear out the ANCEL register, because this is dealing with the uh, analog to digital. And that will take precedence. So we want to um, set that to 0. Then here's where we set up the TRIS. Uh, and so in the TRIS IO is where we assign is a pin input pin or output pin. And so we want, um, it doesn't matter what pin 0 is, but we want pin 1 to be an input pin. And then uh, we want pin 2 to be an output pin. So this is pin 0, pin 1, pin 2, pin 3. Pin 3 is always uh, an input, so that's always a 1. And then pin 4 and pin 5 doesn't matter for this, um, for this setup. Uh, then we're going to shift back to bank 0 because we're going to be turning on and off those um, GPIOs. But as we get in the main loop, we're going to have to do some um, switching back and forth here. Um, so uh, now we go into the main loop and we need to set up, we need to get, switch back to bank one. And so we're going to be able to access the VRCon. And this is on page 40. So let's look at that. And we've talked about this before, but just as a reminder, um, we want to um, 
set bit the last bit here, bit seven, to a one because that will tell us that we are going to um, use an internal reference. Then the last four bits here, bit zero through bit three, are going to um, tell us. Well, let me let me sorry. Let me let me get the rest of these. This this is an unused pin. This pin uh, will tell us if we're in the high range or the low range. And we want to be in the low range because we're measuring sub one volt here and on top of five. So it's it's comparing relative to the full voltage that the um, chip is getting. So five volts, and we want to be in the low range. So that's roughly half, not exactly, but roughly half. If you're if you want voltages below. Uh, in this case, 2.5 volts, which we do, then you'd want to set that to 1. So we set this to 1, and then it's these last four bits that tell us what is our reference voltage. And in the low setting, we look at the equation here, in the low setting, we're just though that value in binary divided by 24 times the 5 volts. So let's let's look at what we want here. We want the we saw that the salt solution was about 0.3 volts, and the deionized was 0.7, and the tap was 0.5. So we want the transition to be somewhere between that. So let's go ahead and, and calculate that. So we would take 5 volts, divide by 24, is going to give us the base step size for this. Now this is too low because this will still be on when we have our, or still be off when we have our salt solution in. But if we just step this up in steps, if we say multiply by two, uh, that's going to be 416 millivolts or 0.46 volts. And so we use not one, but we use two here. So this is, this is two in binary. So that's going to be two divided by 24 times five volts will be our reference volts voltage. And this will just um, change the output pin um, depending on whether we're exceeding or um, less than the than um, that voltage. And also let's see, I think there was something else I wanted to mention. Yeah, let me go back up here. Um, let's see, um, this is again page 38. So 37 is where we compare. Um, let's see. Yeah, here it is. So um, we want to, uh, let's see, where is it? Right here. Pin four, we want an inverted out. We want a non-inverted output. Uh, so we we put that as zero there because we want the light to be off above that voltage. Okay. So uh, I think in our er, in our earlier experiment with the or earlier lab with the comparator, we had that set as an inverting output. And that will control whether the light's on above the voltage or below the voltage. And um, just, a, I guess, a final word here. Notice how simple this code is. We don't have to turn on and off that pin. And I kind of misspoke earlier when I said we're going to have to go back and forth with the GPIO. It's not, it's not the case in the um, comparator setup. Um, the comparator will just automatically turn the output on or off relative to the state of, relative to its state. And so this was, as this is going through the loop, it will just um, control that output pin. We don't need to go back to bank zero to control that output pin. So I misspoke earlier on that. All right, so um, this, is the ex this is an experiment where we have uh, tried an application uh, to measure the salinity or have a, an alert for the salinity of a solution. Oh, your, your solution's getting too salty, so we're going to turn on an alert. And so uh, go ahead and uh, play around with this. Uh, see if you can um, think of ways to improve this. If you are doing this lab through Concordia College and you want to um, 
we'll use different salts or, or uh, try some various things, just come by and see me. Otherwise, uh, like I say, this lab is pretty easy to do uh, with stuff that you have at home.